The arrival of Eula has definitely caused a lot of discussions within the player base, and there's a few important things that need to be addressed in this video. It's kinda weird if you think about it, there's been three banners back to back that didn't feature any new 5 star characters and instead, they were all reruns with some new 4 stars included, but after Eula has finally shown up as the newest addition, you would think that after so many discussions and videos popping up about her insane burst damage, she's going to be another example of Mihoyo going for the power creep strategy, however, the point of this whole discussion would be to show you that Eula is in fact more or less breaking the meta, but not in the way you would think, and to make things more simple, you will see why Eula seems to be the perfect character for nearly any type of player in terms of who acquires her, ranging from a free-to-play player to a big spender that gets a couple of her constellations to the massive whale that's going to max out everything. And the first thing that we need to get out of the way would be her actual biggest selling point and the types of people who will either hate it or love it. And unlike anyone else we've seen, Eula has a unique combo system that's tied to her energy stacks and by using her elemental skill and attacks, you can build it up for a massive ultimate attack. Now, the amount of stacks it can reach in theory does not come to reality when actually trying to build them up, so even if you can get to 30 energy stacks in practicality at zero constellations and facing off against slow enemies, you can expect to get around 10 to 12 stacks on average, provided you can execute the combo without any interruptions and by utilizing her passive effects. Still, if you squeeze even half of the average stacks, the resulting explosion is still pretty massive, especially against humanoid enemies like the Fatui agents. But if this type of gameplay does not excite you, then it's totally fine, and there's a reason why gotcha games are wonderful in their own right, because with so many new characters, you're bound to discover your favorite ones eventually. And the real reason why this combo system gets mentioned would be the fact there's a lot of people out there who will enjoy it and more importantly, this type of design feels rewarding and can give you a sense of progress if you like to become better with a character over a duration of time. And comparing Eula to someone like Ganyu or Shao is like day and night because while the Coco Goat can just sit back and snipe away with destructive shots, she has less of a rewarding playstyle and capitalizes more in providing value, whether as your main damage dealer or support, and someone like Xiao, on the other hand, basically works as someone with one gimmick, which are his plunging attacks. And of course, they have their own gameplay depth, and theory crafters will prove it to you, but for an average player, seeing a character that can actually reward you for using a successful combo is surely going to be a dopamine rush for many. So basically, one of the things that makes Yula such a good addition to Genshin would be her unique combo system that rewards players with a big damage burst, even if you're using her at zero zero constellations and budget weapons. But what about those big damage numbers you've been hearing about her burst, and does that mean she's an inferior product without getting more copies of her? Well, to answer this, we need to take a look at the world of whaling. There's an overused proverb saying that with great power comes great responsibility, but when we're talking about Genshin and the damage showcases you've been seeing or hearing about, then it's better to call it for what it is. With great power comes great preparation. And the typical things you can spot when you see these types of showcases for those massive damage numbers would be the 7th floor of the Spiral Abyss, max refined weapons and full constellation characters, but above all, a team composition that may or may not work in actual practicality. Of course, let's not forget that you need insanely optimized artifacts to make it even work. And if you see proof of Eula hitting for 4 to 5 million damage, then you're probably aware that behind the scenes there's a lot of moving parts and preparation that's needed in order to achieve this end result, but even then, getting just one-fifth of the result without too much reliance on these previously mentioned setups is a true indicator of the character's power. So where does this leave us with the videos of whales hitting for so much damage? In all honesty, one of them said it best, Eula is like a toy for these big spenders they get to play with, while the rest of the player base who are using her with zero constellations are going to be getting the same damage results minus a million or two. But should this really make anyone mad, even if they have the right to do so, or instead, since the game is purely player against environment, these big numbers are basically a payoff for something that on average can cost up to $1,500, and in fact, we're fast approaching a year since Genshin has been out, and there hasn't been a single event that featured leaderboards, rewards, or anything that basically caters to the whales of this game. It's actually surprising to see so many players willingly getting full constellations of 5-star characters, when in reality, the only things that are challenging in the game is the spiral 
Abyss, and occasional events like the Hypostatic Symphony and Energy Amplifier, but even then, there's plenty of content creators and regular players just sharing their own experience of how they can clear even the most difficult of challenges with free-to-play solutions. So even if we're getting characters like Eula, who likes to produce six-digit numbers for the whales, she remains more of an entertainment to them and less of a necessity. But what Mihoyo has done with Eula is actually pretty interesting. For the average player, she offers a rewarding playstyle and very competent damage output, while a high-paying customer can expect more of the same, except they will be seeing their damage with an extra digit or two attached. So if we're being frank here, it seems to be both sides get to enjoy a product no matter how much they invested in, but this, of course, might become more problematic in the future if the company decides to introduce any type of ranking system, since there has been no other gacha game like Genshin that has seen such a massive reach in the western gaming world. If you ever want to make a character more grounded, just mess around with their energy generation and you're good to go. Well, at least that's what Mihoyo has been doing with few of the new characters so far, and you can't blame them. This seems to be working, and while Eula can produce amazing damage with her burst, you definitely need to bring a specific set of teammates or even weapons to help her out. And this isn't something that's new to us, we've already seen this type of treatment given to Shao, but his fate is worse than Eula's, where he doesn't even generate energy during his burst, and if you want to get a high performing output from him, you'll also have to limit yourself with some specific team comps. But for Eula, even if her biggest drawback is her energy, she still has her Claymore, which is a good weapon type for staggering your enemies. Not to mention she's also from Cryo Elements, which means you've got all the best reactions accessible to you, from superconducting, to freezing, to even melting, even if she doesn't benefit that much from the latter. Point is, she's pretty much covered in all but one department where she lacks in, but one thing not many people talk about is the so-called expiration date or getting power crept in the future. And while this is something that we can never predict, one of the arguments we will hear about her is that a support character has a better chance to stay relevant than a pure damage character. And while this is true for the most part, this really only applies to people who have a very long-term vision of the game, because like it or not, the biggest strategy of most gacha games to promote their newest character is their power level. But luckily, because Genshin is such a unique achievement in gaming, where a three-dimensional character with their own music, art and interactions can influence players beyond the reasoning of playstyle or damage. Still, before any of this doom and gloom happens, right now, at this current state of the game, even if we take into consideration an average Eula player who are going to be at zero constellations, with not so amazing artifacts and a 4-star weapon backed by a decent team, she is still an example of how a balanced character should look like and the amount of value you can get out of her. She's obviously nowhere near the relevancy of Ganyu, Zhongli or Venti, because all of them provide not just damage but also a ton of support, but taking everything else into consideration, she's definitely going to be a go-to character for many to clear out even the most challenging trials. Unless, of course, you get something like energy amplifier events, where physical damage is reduced by half. The case of Eula's appearance, reception, and performance is truly something that's worth studying, because what she has seemed to accomplish is not an easy feat, since when you're trying to appeal to everyone, you end up appealing to no one, but in Eula's case, there's definitely a middle ground to be found with her, and everyone gets to have fun in their own little sandbox world. But to finish this video off with a quick recap, the biggest selling point of Eula is her combo system that rewards you with powerful bursts, which feel impactful to both regular and whale players, even if the latter group is basically just just getting an expensive big number generator in a game that barely has any content for it, but it seems to be whales are perfectly fine with it. And even if we do see showcasing videos of Eula dealing millions of damage, it's clear these are the usual preparation videos done in a very controlled environment that probably would lead to one-fifth or even less performance if done in any actual real challenge. Finally, for the most common criticism we've seen about her is energy generation, which basically gets addressed with the right team composition and a design that still allows her to gain elemental particles even during the burst, so the one thing that might make her less relevant in the future is getting power crept by a stronger physical damage dealer, which is bound to happen at some point in the game's lifeline, but shouldn't be a concern for anyone unless Mihoyo pulls the rug and releases a replacement for her within a few months. Either way, it's a rare sight to see a character with such a ruthless and efficient design, and it would be great to see more of it in the future, especially if Mihoyo can release more characters with rewarding playstyle that adds a layer of complexity to a character's performance.
or they might just do another Sneeze and Tango campaign and just call it a day. But if you enjoyed this video and would like to help the channel out, make sure to click on the subscribe button and enable the notifications from the bell icon, and don't forget to gently press the like button. More stuff gets discussed about Genshin on Gacha Gamer's Twitter, so make sure to follow there as well, link in the description. Thanks for watching till the end, and see you next time.